I was filming and I saw this dog walker, he started yelling at me. He said, you didn't ask me if you could film me. I got so nervous that I honestly, I honestly thought I was gonna pee in my pants. I'll tell you what happened. If this is your first time here, my name's Geraldine. I grew up in New York City and I'm living bi-coastally. Then I started getting nervous and I started laughing. If you ever have a small voice in your head that says, are you being an asshole? Then maybe it's worth pausing and reflecting. And I attempted to apologize. And then he said, you're not sorry because you're laughing. <laughs> I was like, and now I even think about it and it's just very embarrassing. New York versus LA with regard to media. New Yorkers are just like busy doing their own thing. So for the most part, they really don't even notice you if you're photographing or filming. Um, in contrast, LA is are uh, very aware. And I think it's because the industry is out here, but they're extremely aware of creating content and media and taking pictures and you know both good and bad they will be like super aware if you're if you're filming them but also very respectful if you're filming something on the street they'll wait and like walk around you or you know they're just very conscious of it um and that's why i was so surprised when this dog walker in new york had such a big reaction to me taking footage of him but why did he get so mad I mean, who am I? I'm just uh, doing my little YouTube channel. Or who knows, maybe he's famous. Or one of the dogs he's taking care of is famous. Pretty sure I figured it out in the end, but we'll get to that later. So I guess I'm a little spoiled because of my orientation with the camera and the city. You see, when I was little, I was painfully shy and I was given a camera and it created kind of like a safety bubble for me to observe the world at a safe distance. So even though I developed this muscle for street photography, and usually I take risks without a problem, and I'm okay with the consequences, every now and then something will come up and trigger that introvert that's still within me. One of the logistical problems with getting footage in public or filming is that when you ask for permission, it completely changes the dynamic of the situation and removes any possibility of capturing something that was authentic. When people think they aren't being watched, they behave differently. They're just themselves, authentic, natural, real. Where I landed over the years is to take the, take the photo first and ask questions later. Show them the picture, discuss it with them, ask them if I can use it, and offer them the picture as well. of a pure documentary photographer or filmmaker you are, you can never remove yourself from your own bias. In art school, there was a scale from pure documentary photography to complete fabrication. But YouTube is kind of a hybrid of education, reality TV, and filmmaking. So, it's an interesting landscape of illusion and deception and timelines, but it still comes back to what I want to emphasize 
in the story. But it's like, it reminds me of the sin, the specific sin. Mm -hmm. But Bruce inserts himself into the photo, into the people's lives. And there's something very bold and honest and, and like, um, kind of like authentic in its own way. And even though it changes the dynamic of the photograph, um, he captures people's reactions to him. It and it's so up close and personal that it's almost like jolts them out of their life to have Bruce in their face. And we, the viewer, are like confronted with this. So it's like bold and risk-taking and, um, and it definitely changes the outcome. And yet it creates this intimacy in this other way. to be corrected, especially in public, but most of the time it requires just a simple course correction. You know, I'm used to just picking up my camera and being out in New York and um, getting the shots that I want. Authenticity of what your, the points you're trying to make and the story you're trying to tell, as long as those are clear, I think, then it helps know where you stand when you're interacting with other people. For instance, had I been really clear, the story that I was telling was like the story about New York. When I saw him, I was like, oh my god, this is like such a New York moment. It really represents like what it's like to have a pet and like this aspect. Here's this like whole other job created because of the lifestyle we lead in New York, right? And yet, this dog walker, I could have asked and another dog walk. It's a little different than me being on the subway and capturing a moment that if I asked permission, it would change the moment. And the dog walker was part of that story, part of like the fabric of New York. It wasn't necessarily about this person. I think that's the area that could have potentially been offensive. And to this dog walker, if you're watching, which you probably aren't because there's 8 million people in New York and we're all just trying to get along, I could have asked you if I could get some footage. But if you are, my apologies. I think, you know, if you're a new creator, one thing to think about if choices you want to make, if you're doing vlogs, do you want to be like a very purist and stay in the day exactly as it unfolded or do you want to be more of like the crafting story, more curated storyteller and do a vlog that way? So I think these are, you know, things to think about and what story you're trying to tell and how you want to tell it. Okay, just as there are rules in street photography, there are rules in filmmaking. And a lot of those require making new choices, a lot of choices. 
because as many choices there as there are in photography, I feel like just multiply that. I just feel like it's endless movie magic. <laughs> and that's really exciting, but it also can be very overwhelming. But I feel like as I get more accustomed to what my choices are and what the possibilities are, I can start to use them in a creative way to help me tell my story. As much as possible, being intentioned about what story I'm trying to tell will just help streamline the, the workflow and what shots I want to get and, um, and also like how I want to be um, with other people, creating, you know, collaborating with other people. Sometimes I get a little judgy with Gen Z and how sensitive and concerned about other people's feelings and not stepping on anyone's toes and all of that. And with this moment, with the dog walker and filmmaking in general, I feel like I can borrow a page from Mindful. I think creating permission is really the name of the game um, when possible. I think in this case, I could have gone um, further in creating permission with this dog walker. If I am making an effort to create permission or if someone's uncomfortable, I'm always willing to delete footage so they can say no, but that's better than invading someone's privacy and them getting pissed and then me feeling like garbage <laughs> because I've made someone else feel exploited in some way. And while I want to take a page from Gen Z in this aspect, I also don't want to stop taking risks because I feel like when we stop taking risks, we kind of stop growing as artists. I think it's really an important aspect and I'm going to assert that as I make a commitment to respecting other people's privacy, getting permission, I feel like it'll push me further out of my comfort zone to take more risks in a way. I hope that makes sense. I feel like um, there's a truth in there. I'm just not sure I'm articulating it in like the best way possible. So as I'm navigating this new territory, I'm asking myself, what is gonna make me feel like I have more freedom? And I think getting to know what my choices are in terms of transition, contact, timelines, and all of those things and how they play a part in my story, being able to get permission, collaborate, and and make it okay to get certain footage is also going to be giving me freedom to feel comfortable in moving forward with telling a story. When I was, you know, young, I took this weakness that felt like I just wanted to crawl through the cracks and I turned it into like a superpower. And that is like the ability to be invisible or like a fly on the wall. But to every superpower, there's also like a shadow aspect. And I think that um, the shadow aspect of being invisible is that I felt like my actions were sort of impervious to other people. And that's simply not true. I exist. I have an effect on the world, on other people. And I think taking responsibility for that is... Um, it's a growth moment for me. That gorgeous cheese and oh, tomato and basil and really burrata, yummy cheese. I ate that yesterday and this is meatballs and tomato sauce. I'm just, I'm just wondering like what you all think about that. It's impossible to take away your own bias. I think it's just... Ma'am, that is not gonna work. Ma'am, that's not gonna work. 